it has been one year since our solar and inverter upgrade on our RV and today I want to give you an update on exactly what's been going on all the pros and cons and what we love about our system and what we do not like about our system one year later <laughs> would we do it again knowing what we know about our system after one year we will spill all the details in today's video Welcome to Keys 5 Adventures. Today's video is going to cover our solar system and what we love about it, what we hate about it, pros and cons, the trouble we've had. So stick around. Glad you're here. We developed a schematic of our own system. The installer that we chose did not provide us with a schematic. So I'm going to go ahead and go over this so that you can understand and see all the different components. And we're going to start off up on the roof. On the roof, we have four 210 watt solar panels. They are wired in series parallel. We also have three 395 watt solar panels that are wired in series. The four 210 solar panels are connected into one solar controller. It is a Victron MPPT 150-70 and then the three larger panels in series are connected to a 150-85 MPPT. In our front bay you will find two 3000 watt multi plus inverter chargers. So these invert as well as charge our batteries. In our basement, you can find our six battle born batteries as well as our solar controllers, our Serbo GX, and we also have a BMS by Victron. The Serbo GX is probably our favorite part about the system because we can open our cabinet and we can see exactly what is going on, how much solar is coming in, how many watts we're using, exactly where our batteries are. We also have two Lynx power ends. The Lynx power end is a distribution bus bar for all of our DC current. It's a really straightforward and easy way to bring all of your different connections in and distribute them out to the rest of the system. We also added an auto transformer and I will go through the details about that later in the video. One of the pros of our system is that we can camp anywhere we want. Bing! Asterisk. If it's working correctly. With our solar, we don't need our generator. It is quiet. It is peaceful. And I feel like it's a really good thing for our environment that we're pulling power in and using solar. Another pro of our system is our Serbo GX. It is nice to see exactly what's coming in, what's going out. You can turn on certain items and you can even see exactly how much energy that item uses. It has a power management system. So if we're hooked up to maybe just a 110 outlet, we can pull from the outlet and pull from our batteries and have 50 amp usage. Another pro that we like is that we can run our gas electric refrigerator on electric. We do not like to run down the road with our propane on. So we can turn off our propane let it go on electric and basically keep the RV cold all day long using our solar panels while we're driving. Another thing we love about our solar is actually become a fun hobby for us. We enjoy tinkering with it and learning more about the electrical system and adding to it, improving it. It's been fun for both of us. Another great thing about our system is running the air conditioner off our batteries. I mean, it's everybody's dream, right? You can run your air conditioning off your battery. Bing! Asterisk! Not very long. <laughs> the last pro is that we can run 
our RV comfortably using the power of the sun and our batteries for days on end. So that was all the pros. Now we're going to talk about the cons of this RV solar system. The biggest con of our RV solar system. What's your guess? Expensive! It is so expensive. You would be better off buying a generator and running it from gas. It is way cheaper. Another con is when your system is improperly installed. It is very important to have a highly qualified installer because electricity is dangerous and we were told that we shouldn't even sleep in our RV because we would risk a fire and death. That's how serious it is that you need to have a good installer. Another con of this system is that you actually need to know about the electrical systems in your RV. This is not a plug and play thing. You have to understand how things work and where they can go wrong. If you don't know how your system works, how are you going to troubleshoot it and how are you going to get it fixed? If you are out boondocking, there's probably not going to be very great cellular service <laughs> and you could be stuck. So a con is that these are risks you take when you have a system like this because if one nut gets loose or a fuse blows and you don't have a replacement, the whole system could go down. Another con of our system or systems like this in general is there are not a lot of people who work on these systems. You will see a lot of installers out there, but a lot of them are so booked up that they actually cannot come in and repair your system when you need it. So if your system breaks down, if something goes wrong, you could be stranded, you could be left on the side of the road, you could be stuck where you are, and nobody will come and fix your system. If you do repair these systems, I would love you to comment below. I wanna make a list and post it on our website of all of the different repairers across the country who could help with these solar systems and getting them repaired when they do break down. Another con of this system is extra weight. Your RV has a certain payload or carrying capacity and these systems can weigh a lot. Ours weighs approximately 600 pounds so we've had to be very careful about where we place things in the RV we don't like to place extra items in the front of our RV where the system is held. And we have started removing things from our RV that are unnecessary to lighten the load of our RV. Another con is that we lost a solar panel. We were driving down the road and someone flagged us down, pulled over with us, and told us that our solar panel flew over their vehicle and into the median. This was straight out of our installer's driveway. Within five minutes of getting our solar installed and leaving with our RV. Very exciting day, we got our rig back. And see the solar panels up there. Well, we're back. Had a little incident. Yeah. Uh, front solar panel blew off. Oh. Well, we're gonna try this again, I think. And then I'm going to be recording the whole time we're driving home. Because you gonna sit on might, top? I'm a, <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do well, this. Yeah, I have the GoPro. I wish we could mount Just, it up we're there. We're gonna mount the GoPro up by the solar panel. Oh my God. Here's the solar panel. It flew off the RV and just happened to land in the median. So we get on our roof every time we move and check the attachment 
of every panel. That is a con. Many people don't like getting on their roof. If you're afraid of heights and don't have anyone to get on your roof and check your panels, solar may not be for you. I will link the video below in the comments and also above and you can watch exactly what happened with our install. Another con is having to carry and supply yourself with all the fuses and tools you need to repair your system. Probably our second biggest negative has been the heat that these systems produce. Our front bay got almost 130 degrees, so we have a problem. Our inverters shut down, thankfully, when they are overheated, but we have had to develop a fan system to cool our batteries and our inverters. They heat up very quickly especially if the temperature outside is more than 80 degrees. If you are camping somewhere where you need the air conditioner, then you probably shouldn't be depending upon solar. To recharge your batteries, those components heat up. To run an inverter or two produces a lot of heat. Even your solar controllers can get hot. So if you are planning on using solar and batteries to run your air conditioners, you need to go further north where it is Google it is very hard to accomplish this. Even with 2,000 watts of solar, we cannot run two or three AC units in our RV with six 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries. It drains them very quickly. So you just don't want to depend on solar and batteries for the air conditioning. The best bet for the least amount of uh, heat is to use your generator. Speaking of generators, as I mentioned before, we do have an Onan 5500 generator that came stock for our RV. With that generator, we were actually able to run all three air conditioners at the same time. A con of our system as it has been installed is that we could not run three anymore using our system or even our generator. The Victron Multi Plus does not recognize both legs of the Onan 5500 generator. So we had to take one leg of power from the generator and run it through an auto transformer and then through to the system to flip the sine wave so that the Victron Multi Pluses would recognize the second leg of our Onan. We would never depend solely on our solar system because it has failed us. So we would not depend on it and not have a generator. I feel like if you have a solar system, you still need a generator for backup power when it's cloudy, rainy, if it's too hot or too cold. And our last con of the system is that one loose connection can cause a short and cause the entire system to fail. And finding that loose connection can take hours. <laughs> so that is a big negative when you are trying to pull out of a campground or pull your slides in, push them out, even to lower your RV onto your truck. If you have one loose connection, the whole system will fail. Well, that about wraps up our video today of our system. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned a lot. We do love our system and we have a lot of things that we do not like about our system. So it's really hard to say. I don't know what Brian's answer would be, but my answer, is it worth the money? I would say probably not. I do not like the extra weight. I do not like the worry. I do not like how often our system fails. So I would definitely prefer to just use our generator. Everything would be lighter. I could pack more clothes in the closet and we would be happier. <laughs> I just wanna thank you for watching today and I hope you would take a moment to subscribe so that we can keep making videos like this. And when you subscribe and you like it, it does put it out there to, for more people to watch and see and learn and that's really what we're all about. We like to share information and help everybody make good choices about what's right for their families and their RVs. Thank you so much for watching today and I just want to give you one last point that if you decide you do want to do solar, which is an awesome thing, make sure that you get a good installer, a reputable installer. And when you find that installer that has good references, 
good photos and videos and good communication. Make sure that after the install, you have someone to go to when you have issues with your system. Someone you can go to when you have questions. And make sure that you get a diagram of your system before you start. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and happy camping. So can you guess what the first con is? Expensive. Yes, it would be cheaper to run your RV. Hey! Ah! <laughs> Brendan, what's your favorite part about our RV solar system? I don't know a single thing about it. Yeah. You could have said, I can use my Xbox using the sun. No. No? No. That's not it? No. Uh. Uh, yeah. That's my answer. What's your favorite thing about our RV solar system? I, I can use my Xbox. <laughs> and then the RV, while they do fun stuff. And I can just do what I could do at home, but here. Alright. Yeah. Cool. What <laughs> camera? If you like our content and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate your support.